Hey guys, welcome back. So first off, I just want to apologize for not uploading consistently lately. I've been having some trouble with the uh, the pen uh, and pad that I use. It's been really buggy lately. I think the driver software is messed up or something like that. But anyway, uh, you guys will probably see that it, things look a little choppy and that's just because of this problem that I'm having. Uh, but I figured I'd just try to power through it and ignore it for now. And hopefully it's not too much of a distraction. So anyway, today we're going to talk about um, an introduction to second order equations. So a second order linear differential equation is of this general form right here. P of X times Y double prime plus Q of X times Y prime plus R of X times Y is equal to F of X. Or in other words, just combinations of the first, second, and zeroth derivative all set equal to uh, some forcing function uh, F of X. So this is the general form of a second order differential equation. So to start off second order equations, we are going to consider the most simple case. And that is, we're gonna let P of X be a constant, we'll call A. We're gonna let Q of X be a constant that we'll call B, and R of X be a constant called C. So these are no longer functions of X, but they are constant coefficients. And also the next simplification that we, that we are going to make is we're gonna let this forcing function on the right hand side be equal to zero. So I'm going to call this uh, differential equation of this form, I'm going to call it a constant coefficient linear homogeneous second order differential equation. So let's take a look at these keywords right here. Constant coefficient because our coefficients on y double prime, y prime, and y are all constants. They're not, they're, they're not functions of x. Um, it's linear because, again, um, these coefficients are not functions of y or any of its derivatives. And it's homogeneous because all of this is equal to zero. There is no forcing function on the right-hand side. And we refer to that as being homogeneous. And then finally, it is a second order differential equation because it contains the second derivative of our unknown function y. All right, so let's go ahead and rewrite this form. We've got ay double prime plus b times y prime and then plus c times y. And all that is going to be equal zero. So what I want to do in this video is help you guys build some intuition on what this case means what a constant coefficient linear homogeneous second order difference equation really is. And to understand what's really going on here and how to solve this type of difference equation, we need to take a look at what this expression is actually saying. What it's saying is that if we add up linear combinations of a function and its derivatives, then all of that has to cancel off to zero. And in order for that to be true, in order for a function and its derivatives to sum up to zero, then that means that that function and its derivatives must be of the same shape, or they must be linear combinations of each other. So let me illustrate this point with an example. Let's say that we have a function y, and it's equal to x squared. That would make y prime be equal to 2x, and y double prime is equal to 2. See, see what I mean by a buggy pen? See how it just automatically connected those lines? Yeah, anyway. Anyway, um, where was I? Uh, so yeah, let's say that we have these, a function y is equal to x squared, and here, these are its derivatives. And we can see, just by looking at its derivatives, that they are not of the same form as our original function y. y prime has x to the first power, and y has x to the second power. And similarly, y double prime has x to the zero power, which is not of the same form as y prime and y. So what that means is that there does not exist anything, any constant c1 times x squared plus c2 times 2x plus c3 times 2. There does not exist any constants such that I can add this up and equal to zero for all values of x. And again, that's because these functions are not of the same form. There's no way that I can create an x squared out of a 2x or there's no way that I can create a 2x out of a 2. However, let's go ahead and think of a function that this could be the case. Let's consider y is equal to e to the x. 
if I were to continuously take derivatives of this, I would just keep on getting e to the x. So what we have here is a function that has all of its derivatives of the same form as the original function. So what that means is that we can sum these up in a way that all of it sums to zero. For example, I can take two times y, which is e to the x, and I can subtract y prime, which is e to the x, and I can subtract y double prime, which is e to the x, and what I get is zero. So we can see that this exponential function offers a way for us to actually solve this constant coefficient linear homogeneous second order differential equation. Now I know some of you guys are probably thinking, okay, what about y is equal to sine of x? All right, well, okay, this could work. So y prime is equal to cosine of x. Gosh, man, that is really annoying, isn't it? Anyway, uh, y double prime, oh, there it goes again, is equal to negative sine of x. Um, so we can see that I can, if I take y, plus y double prime, this is just sine of x minus sine of x, which comes out to zero. So we can see that this sinusoid functions, these uh, trigonometric functions, they also have the uh, ability to, to satisfy this differential equation. But now check this out. If you guys recall Euler's formula, that states that e to the i times theta is equal to cosine of theta plus i times sine of theta. And we can see that this exponential is actually related to cosine and sine. So it's interesting how these functions all tie back to the exponential function. And similarly, what about hyperbolic cosine and hyperbolic sine? Well, these have very similar properties when it comes to the derivatives as uh, sine and cosine. And if, and if we were to actually look at the definition of hyperbolic sine or hyperbolic hyperbolic cosine, we see that they are actually in terms of the exponential functions. I think that's the correct expression. And then we have hyperbolic cosine e to the x plus e to the negative x over 2. This should be a negative x. Anyway, we can see that the functions that are able to satisfy the criteria that this expression states, which is the ability for the function and its derivatives to sum up to zero, we can see that all those functions that satisfy that relate back to the exponential function. So when we go about solving a constant coefficient linear homogeneous second order differential equation of this form right here, then the way we solve it is we assume a solution of the form y is equal to e to the r times t, where r is an unknown that we are solving for. Maybe it'll come out as a real number. Maybe it'll come out as an imaginary number, which we can then convert to cosines and sines using Euler's formula. But either way, as long as we assume a function of this form, we can just differentiate it two times, plug it back into this differential equation, and solve for r. And we will go ahead and do that in the next videos. But the point of this video was to introduce the concept that a lot of times in differential equations, instead of actually producing a solution from just analyzing the differential equation itself, it's often more practical and um, sometimes it's absolutely necessary to assume a certain solution and then go ahead and solve it as if that were the correct form of the solution. And if it works out, then it works out. Great, you get your solution. But if it doesn't, then maybe you need to try to assume another solution or do something else. But based off the reasoning that I just explained, we know that a function of the exponential form will always satisfy a constant coefficient linear homogeneous second order differential equation. So that's just some background info on second order equations. We're, again, we're going to start with the homogeneous constant coefficient case, and then we're going to go ahead and start relaxing these restrictions. Next, we're gonna go ahead and say, okay, let's let um, A, B, and C be functions of X again, and we'll learn how to solve those kinds. And then after that, we'll go ahead and say, all right, let's no longer allow this to equal zero. Let's let it equal some kind of function on the right-hand side. And then we'll learn how to solve those. But really, the basis of solving second-order differential equations uh, really comes down to this idea right here. So anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. And hopefully I get this uh, pen thing working again. Um, anyway, I'll see you guys.